Welcome, and thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Sitecore Water Cooler, the casual conversation podcast dedicated to covering all things related to Sitecore, including product updates, implementations, insights, getting the most out of your Sitecore investment, and more. I'm your guest host today, Maggie Burke, Sitecore Program Manager and Sitecore MVP at AmericanEagle.com. A website redesign can be a daunting task, especially when you are looking into introducing an array of new systems across your digital space. Nordson's continuous expansion via acquisition had brought inconsistent representation of the Nordson brand and products across multiple websites. These inconsistencies amplified the urgent need to modernize the company's unified digital solution approach and overall capabilities. The Sitecore Digital Experience Platform team at AmericanEagle.com welcomed the opportunity with Nordson Corporation to advance next generation digital success. Today, we'll be discussing that journey. We are joined today by our Sitecore business analyst, Casey Stanitz, who led the requirements for the Nordson Rebuild, and two of our main contacts and project confidants, Scott Wilburn, Senior Manager, Corporate Communications at Nordson, and Jerry Berndobler, Nordson's Web Development Manager. Casey, Scott, Jerry, welcome to the water cooler. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Thanks. Maggie. All right. So kind of diving into the project a little bit, we want to talk a little bit about what or who the Nordson organization is. So Scott, Jerry, can you guys give us just a quick background on who you guys are as a corporation, kind of what the company does, just so the listeners out there can understand a little bit more about your team? Yeah, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Um, So Nordson's a B2B manufacturer uh, headquartered in Westlake, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. Uh, We were founded in 1954 and We are a global organization with offices in over 35 countries. And our customers are mainly other manufacturers. Um, We engineer and produce products that they use to um, dispense uh, all kinds of things from dispensings, coatings, sealants, biomaterials, and other materials. Uh, Also fluid management, uh, test and inspection, UV curing, and plasma, plasma surface treatment. So we have uh, 11 divisions that serve our customers in numerous uh, consumer, non-durable and durable technology end markets, uh, including things like packaging, non-wovens, electronics, medical appliances, energy transportation, uh, construction, and general product assembly and finishing. Um, We support those products um, with application expertise in global sales and service professionals all around the world. And our our typical uh, users of our website are usually like expert spec engineers, uh, decision makers that are kind of from the senior leadership side of things, um, buyers, purchase managers. And then there's also investors, media, uh, media, uh, career seekers, and employees as well. Awesome. And I think one question that I think would be interesting for the listeners to kind of hear about too is, you know, you guys obviously have a vast number of divisions. Um, Do you guys have a recent number of just kind of how many different acquisitions and divisions you guys have under the current umbrella right now? Oh, wow. Over the years, (laughs) um, many. Um, (laughs) If you don't know the exact number. Longer than I have. Do you remember like all of them? I mean, since your time here, I mean, there's been so, so many. Or at least active right now that are like on the site. Well, they've all been integrated, yeah. right? So um, I don't know, over time, 30, yeah. 40 acquisitions that, you know, I can probably come up with eventually. <laughs> we'll have you sit here and Certainly. list them. Yeah, there's 11. <laughs> Iterate yeah. them one by one. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> Great. Well, and then also, too, I think another interesting statistic is understanding when was so, you know, before we go into the project in the project itself, the new redesign launched in December of uh, 2022. But when was the last time that you guys actually went through the process of doing a redesign before this most recent one? The previous one was uh, 2014, 2015 kind of time frame. Um, That was really our our transition to the site court to begin with. So previous to that, we had an older version of a Microsoft CMS, Mm -hmm. um, sort of got developed and rolled into SharePoint at one point. Mm -hmm. So that was what we were on previously, but um, the last actual redesign involved a replatforming as well. So that's when we went to site court the first time. Thanks. 
to both of you. So I think I'll I'll kind of speak a little bit to the project itself. Um, so going back in time, we kicked off the project in December of 2021. Um, and I think the most critical part of any project, and really when you're talking about a redesign, and truthfully, you know, Jerry, it sounds like you guys hadn't done it in about seven years, it, it sounds like. I think the most critical part of any redesign project is really starting with discovery. Um, it can be very tedious, of course. You know, you're getting a lot of voices, a lot of opinions, a lot of people in one room. But at the same time, it sets up a really strong framework and foundation for the project and allows the teams, both teams, to understand what they're building and and not only the what, but the why, why we're building things a certain way. Um, so one of the things that we started out with with the Nords and team was a discovery process and really having stakeholder meetings with all of them. Um, and so we met first with the corporate team. Um, so both of you and some leadership on your side um, to really just uh, kind of understand holistically what the goals were for the site. But then we also met with the different various division teams that we were talking about. Um, it, it was not 30 by all means. I'll, I'll preface that now. Um, but it was close to, I think, about eight or nine different division teams that we met with. And it was really kind of going over, you know, goals of the redesign, pain points that were on the site, um, ideal UX and kind of understanding that piece of it, the target audiences that you guys were trying to get at, but also just some key performance indicators that we could try to measure against to really know that, you know, what what was being done was something that we could measure the success on. Um, so kind of the outcome and what came out of that was that a strong foundational document was created that really included all of the various things that were collected during those meetings, but also we ran through a lot of your analytics, um, did a lot of competitive analysis as well to really see how you matched up against the different competitors in your realm um, to understand, you know, not just your website, but your digital presence on on the web um, and understanding even just from an SEO standpoint, you know, how are we going to be able to give you guys, you know, some enhancements there as well. So some of the outcomes really that came from discovery and some of those goals that came out of it uh, were, I think, targeted in three areas. So it was to improve the targeted audience acquisition. So improve people that you were just acquiring onto the site. Um, again, whether that's through SEO, whether that's through paid campaigns, um, you know, just anything that we can get brand recognition around to get people to the site. The other area was the improved target audience engagement and qualification. So once you get them to the site, how are we going to keep them engaged? How are we going to keep them on the site? Make sure that those bounce rates, you know, go lower um, and that people are, you know, kind of seeing that they are able to find the information that they need quickly um, to keep them staying on the site. Uh, and then the other area, too, was, you know, of course, for any site, improving absolute conversion numbers and optimizing your conversion rates. So, um, you know, for you guys specifically, it was around can we get people to to the product pages, but ultimately contacting sales, filling out forms, um, form submissions, things like that, that are going to show you guys that there is improvement in people converting on the site because, you know, they're actually following through with wanting to find out more about your products. And so those were kind of the key pillars that set up and came out of discovery and really led then kind of the UX piece of it, the just, you know, the define phase, the requirements and things like that, but also really honed in on a key piece to the project, which was your path to search. Um, and really one of the strong recommendations that came out of the discovery phase was around getting an enhanced search tool and really optimizing the search experience on your website. Um, so that, again, not only are you getting people to the site, but they're finding what they're looking for at a faster rate. Um, you know, there's less of a struggle with them having to feel like they have to call and reach out to people to find what they need and things like that. Um, but also allows your team to have a little bit more control around, you know, boosting and bearing results and things like that. Um, so that was kind of the what start and what led into, you know, the discovery or the design process and then the ultimately the the build process. But wanted to ask you guys a little bit about what were some of the challenges that you guys feel like the team was facing on the website, but, you know, also specifically just in search and what you guys feel like kind of led you guys to making the decision that, yeah, an enhanced search tool might be the best option for us. I think one of the things that, you know, led to enhanced search, not just out of the box, uh, capabilities 
from Sitecore was really the ability to, uh, you know, facet and um, be able to filter uh, the, the content easier than, than we could with, uh, uh, with the out-of-the-box solar implementation, which is a, a lot of development work to get that to happen. Um, and really not very flexible, um, you know, no, no real ability to include content from outside of Sitecore, you know, no real ability to kind of branch out and include the, the breadth of what Norton offers in one kind of search experience. And then is there any sort of specific reasoning around you guys? Because we went through some demos, some kind of uh, informational sessions around the different search platforms that existed at the time. And Kaveo was one of the options. Um, and that's ultimately who you guys went with. Was there any catalyst for why you guys chose Kaveo? I think part of it was, you know, recommendation for you guys, right? That it's a, a really good platform for, for Sitecore. Um, but, you know, we've been to symposiums in the past and, you know, seen them at every symposium I've ever been at, you know, so they're, they're a pretty big player in that space, uh, you know, talk to Coveo, um, sort of outside of, um, you know, picking them with you and, you know, really good platform, really extensible platform, um, seems like a good, a good fit for what we were trying to do. Thanks, Jerry. And kind of talking a little bit more about Caveo. So I did get the chance and the opportunity to actually speak with Caveo at the B2B online conference in Chicago uh, early this May. And we talked specifically about your you know, organization and the project itself. Great team over there. Very nice people. Um, and the session itself went very well. Um, I spoke with Brian McGill over there. And, you know, again, we just focused more on um, the search experience on the Nordson website. But I will say it was just great to be in uh, at in-person conferences again, given given the times that have happened in the last few years. I think everybody was just excited to be back in person. Um, and, you know, overall, the session went went very well. Um, but talking a little bit more about just the Caveo implementation specifically for you guys at Nordsen, um, I wanted to refer to Casey and talk a little bit about the discovery around Caveo. Because again, I go back to what I said earlier, that discovery is extremely important for a project, but even just certain elements of a project are going to really require it's just some forms of discovery because, you know, we could have gone in there and just tried to rebuild exactly what you guys already had, Scott and Jerry. But to that point, you know, then we might have been reworking things later on. So it was good that we had some sessions around it to kind of start talking about those areas. So Casey, do you want to take sure. away? Yeah. No, I think one big thing like within this project, within it was that unification. So we were going from on the old Nords and websites. They were very division specific. They were all brand specific. And then with this project, we kind of globalized everything and now all products are grouped together under one landing page. We have all resources and, and things like that that are all kind of combined together. So kind of identifying at, at, at the beginning is just identifying what content types we have. So going through the process of working with Jerry and, and Scott and the teams of, okay, what are all the content types we're going to have on the website? How we're going to be able to filter or facet? How is a user going to be able to find exactly what they want on those pages? As they're all grouped together, as they're now all globally centric, the the taxonomy unite uniting that taxonomy is huge because you you have to kind of think about your taxonomy in more of a global global way. So we went from now we we have different brands, applications, industries, product categories, or just certain facets or or filters of how users are trying to find products. Um, so having a having a global taxonomy in mind is one good thing one thing to think about in the discovery process. Being able to identify all your different content types and what you're what you're going to need or how you're going to categorize those pages, because going beyond global search, you're going to have individualized search landing pages or or listing pages. So we have the product listing page, we have a resource library page that is that culmination of all of those assets, all of those products within one page. So Coveo is a great tool for that. It also gives great analytics. So you have the ability to kind of see analytics at an individualized listing page or landing page. 
Um, so that's just another great feature that that it has to offer. Casey did it pretty good. You know, the, the, the thing that we got from Caveo as a, uh, you know, a partner of Sitecore is really, you know, little development to put components onto a page, right? So you've got those built-in components that are already there. A lot of it was configuration, not necessarily development, which is always nice. You know, mm -hmm. So it's, it's good for future changes that happen because they happen a lot um, <laughs> to be able to make, uh, you know, new pages and not have to redevelop a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. Right. All right. So then wanted to kind of get into specific features on the site. And I think some of the key areas that, you know, um, are definitely powered a lot of them by search, but just kind of also enhance the the website in general. So I think specifically talking about and this kind of leads into what we were talking about with taxonomy and building that kind of strong foundation there was your product listing. So, you know, before you guys kind of had all of your products kind of listed in one area. They could be separated by teams and things like that, but allowing there to be that power of facets and for the teams to be able to narrow down by application type or by industry um, and, and different areas, I really feel like, again, goes back to people being able to find content a little bit easier, um, especially, you know, I feel like the bread and butter of Nordson is your products. And so being able to kind of allow somebody to go to your site now and be able to kind of filter based off of their needs and find the products um, on your listing pages is very helpful. I think another thing too um, is that you guys now have the ability to create specific product landing pages that are, again, more specific to whether it's a division or if it's an application type or if it's any any sort of facet, you can quickly spin up a landing page for it. And you can actually place that into your navigation. And I know that that was a part of some of the breakdown that we had talked about, because it's not always ideal for content authors to feel like they manually have to update campaign landing pages or landing pages that they need to, you know, add certain products to it at any point in time. With Caveo, you're able to spin up those pages and they dynamically will update based off of the products that you guys are tagging with that certain taxonomy. Um, so it kind of takes the burden off of your content authors a little bit when they need to spin up some of these, you know, specific landing pages and whatnot um, and help to hopefully kind of streamline a little bit more of the, the main navigation um, and allowing there to be kind of that breakdown by, again, application type in different areas like that. Um, one of the other ones that I thought was really cool, um, was the product quiz. And again, taking it almost one step further from the product listing, where we talk about people being able to kind of easily find products on your site based off of the search. You guys also have the option to use what we built of a product quiz where it essentially asks the user. So it, it's not necessarily, it's basically the same mechanism as search um, that you know the user is selecting their facets, but it phrases it in a way that's a little bit more intuitive for the people that are coming to your site, where it's asking them what industry they're in. It's asking them, you know, application type and this and that. And then when they get through the questions that are being asked of them, they actually get a dynamically curated page of the products that they're looking for. So it's just another avenue, I would say, for people to be able to find your products at a faster rate. Um, and, you know, again, all that stuff is powered by Caveo, which is pretty cool because it allows, you know, Sitecore and Caveo to both kind of work together um, to hopefully, you know, maximize business value for you guys. I think the other one that I thought was pretty cool, and I'll kind of start talking about it, but feel free to chime yep. in, Casey. But um, spe specifically talking about the resource library, I think that one of the cool areas of your project is that you guys are using one of Sitecore's new SaaS products, Content Hub. Um, and you guys moved away from kind of housing all of your assets in your media library on your old instance. And now everything from images to PDFs, data sheets, anything is now all housed in Content Hub. And the cool thing that was built there was the connection between Content Hub and Caveo to now for your resources have a direct download on the search pages so that when somebody is searching for a resource, 
They don't have to go necessarily to a detail page. And your content team doesn't need to create a detail page for every single resource. They can just now go and download directly, you know, the resource straight from and it's coming straight from Content Hub. Yeah. And I mean, we're leveraging the Coveo push API for that. So, it, I mean, it's speedy performance. I mean, as always, those things are always updated. It, it constantly updated as the, the that push API runs. It's kind of automatically sourced it, it. Like Maggie said, it's pulling those assets directly from Content Hub, not having to pull them from a separate source or have a, a user navigate to a detail page. They could just download them directly. They're also available multi multilingual. I mean, we have all the different languages on the website too. Um, so that is just another kind of layer where if if you're looking for a particular asset in a particular language, uh, you'll be able to find it on that resource library. I think you covered it pretty well. I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's at a high level, it's all about improving the customer experience and touched on a, a number of kind of different improvements that certainly the Coveo platforms brought to that. And some of the out of box, out of the box capabilities like that we just didn't have before. Just thinking about keyword search too, uh, I think are helpful in that uh, regard too. Or just like some of the, you know, the, the type ahead, autocomplete, um, the relevancy stuff that comes with that, um, recommendation results, synonyms, all that stuff that kind of comes in the keyword search. We didn't have that on the old site. It was very basic with kind of the solar stuff that we had before. Mm -hmm. um, this is just out of the box capability. That's just kind of just like, it was very easy for us to kind of add to the site that also kind of enhanced uh, you know, the user experience from that perspective as well. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely empowers your admin team as well, um, you know, and, and whatnot. So that's great. Kind of diving into a little bit more about what's next. You know, obviously you launch a website. The site launched in December of 2022, as I mentioned earlier, but you know, it doesn't end when you launch. Um, so anything coming up for you guys in terms of just items you might have in the roadmap, um, you know, any plans for e-commerce down the road, anything like that that's on the horizon? Well, Casey kind of mentioned one thing, and that's really the the analytics that come uh with Caveo that we haven't really taken a deep look at yet. You know, that's one of the things we want to do this year is really see, you know, get, you know, six ish six ish months, you know, under our belt, uh, with the site being live to really dig into the analytics and see what what people are doing using the search and kind of lead us to where we might want to make improvements. One of the um out of the box components that we get with Caveo. Uh, is a product called IPX, which allows you to do, you know, in-page um, search capability. So that's one of the things we've looked at and uh, uh, have plans to roll out, um, kind of put search right in your face uh, on any page that you're on to be able to find um, context uh, sensitive, context uh, relevant uh, information right from the page that you're on. One other piece that, um, I, I just saw it today actually is, you know, that we get with Caveo that you don't necessarily get with, you know, in, in product solar uh, search is uh, continued development, right? So the, the product continues to evolve, even though we're not doing anything to make the product evolve or not asking for anything. Mm -hmm. And one of the pieces that Caveo will be working on, you know, the hot topic everywhere today, you know, chat GPT type, uh, type AI, AI uh, answers yep. and relevant answers to give back. That will be rolled into their product you know, in the next year. So. so definitely many things on the horizon. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll wrap up here a little bit with just kind of some key, I think, key points that we all probably hit on throughout the session today. So one thing to always kind of keep in mind and, you know, lessons learned is that, you know, strategic discovery process is really the key to success. I think I harped on that quite a bit during this call, but it, it really is. It, it sets things up to be successful, to really understand, like I said, you know, not how we're going to do something or, you know, when we're going to do something, but really the the why behind it, because that's what's going to matter in a few, you know, years before you redesign again, right? You know, you got to understand why you're building what you're building. Um, the other side of it too, is really to just approach everything with a customer mindset versus just your internal view, which I think was a good lesson that, you know, we all tried to keep throughout the project itself and the redesign is to try to think about it, not just from the internal view. Um, you know, I think that a lot of times the divisions might have kind of thought about things a little bit 
in in their division and this project allowed everybody to kind of think of things holistically and and really view it from a customer mindset and view it from hey maybe the customer knows what you know certain product lines are but maybe they don't maybe they just they don't know who what division holds what products maybe they just want to know something because of how the application type is or because of what industry they're in so this i think this project really allowed for the for all teams to really take a look at it from a customer mindset instead of just internally how you're seeing it um and then i think what you guys have all said and one of the biggest things is focusing on the metrics for continuous improvement right you know again the site will launch but it it doesn't end when it launches so focusing on those analytics focusing on the metrics really allows the teams to keep improving whether it's from content optimization seo just little enhancements to the components that are on the site um whether it's just you know machine learning on search Anything that can be improved upon um, is always going to be continuous. So it's always good to just kind of keep an eye on those metrics. So I just wanted to quickly say thank you to Scott and Jerry for joining us today. Um, and also just for your partnership throughout the project. You guys were both such great team members to work with. And it really just felt like such a team effort working with both of you um, throughout this entire redesign. So thank you guys for joining today, but just also wanted to thank you guys for the partnership throughout the project because um, it's definitely one that we're we're proud of and we hope you guys are too. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah, uh, the feeling is mutual. All right, thanks. Yeah, it is. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Casey, Scott, Jerry, thank you all for joining us at the Water Cooler today. I look forward to further collaborating with you guys in the future, and we hope to have you back on the Water Cooler again soon. Thanks again to Casey Stanitz, Scott Wilburn, and Jerry Berndobler for joining us today on the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast, a casual conversation between colleagues and peers centered around all things Sitecore. I'm your guest host, Maggie Burke, and until next time we meet at the Water Cooler, be sure to subscribe to the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast today, wherever you find your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios, with special thanks to executive producers Renee Nelson, Julia Klepich, and Brian Winger.